Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking into our latest TDR Trade Black podcast. A lot going on, obviously, on the political front earlier this week. But now it's time to focus on its earnings season, as we almost forgot. But yes, a lot of companies reporting multi-state operators both yesterday, today, tomorrow, and into next week. And one of our latest companies is multi-state operator Merrimed and their latest earnings. So with that, let's get a deep dive into the latest numbers and welcome in their chief financial officer, Mario Pino, along with their chief revenue officer, Ryan Crandall. Good to see both of you. Happy uh, Thursday. How are things? Great, Shad. Great to see you. Great to see you as well. Yeah, it's uh, it's an eventful day, I would say. <laughs> Mario, how many months has it been now? You getting, uh, I guess... Learning, uh, like I guess, the lay of the land in the industry. How 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 would you put it into words? The first couple of months that you've been with the uh, cannabis industry in Marymed. Oh my God, it's been yeah four four or five months. It's been overwhelming. I think I underestimated how complex the the business is. But, <laughs> uh, it's also been uh, really exciting. You gotta you gotta be agile in this industry. I'm learning. Yeah, learning on the go, right, Ryan? Yeah, absolutely. That's the only way to do it. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, let's get into earnings. Mario, we'll start with you. Latest earnings. Let's take a step back. Give this a 10,000 foot view of how the quarter went. Where are you guys headed? What would you put into so many words as you're based on your latest performance for the investors watching this? Sure. Uh, so we reported 40.6 million in revenues. That was up over last year, about 4.6% and sequentially about 0.4%. Uh, we d had an, another a strong quarter with uh, when it came to our wholesale business, and uh, yeah. I'll let Ryan get into more detail on that. We obviously saw some challenges on the retail side. Uh, we're seeing uh, pricing pressures there. Consumer behavior is changing. Our uh, average order value is going down there. But on the bright side, uh, our foot traffic is increasing. So uh, we're, we're focused on that. From a non-GAAP uh, margin perspective, uh, we are just slightly up from last quarter, about 30 basis points. Obviously, yep. as we kind of still have some of that pricing pressure and our AOVs are going down. Uh, but I'll, they're also down from uh, from last year, about uh, where we were at forty four point five percent. We had a strong quarter from an EBITDA perspective. Uh, we were slightly up compared to to last quarter, but down from uh, from uh, last year as we continue to invest in some of our assets and as those are coming online and wrapping up, uh, we're seeing some uh, pressures there as well as our gr lower gross margins uh, uh, going to the bottom line. Yeah. Common theme that we hear more and more is foot traffic continues to decrease across so many different states, the growth of the industry. But you talked about investments and on your call, you may basically may it sound like most of your heavy investments is done. So tell me about these new facilities you've opened up this year and how they're doing so far. Yeah. So we uh, from the cultivation perspective, we have Illinois that uh, is uh, now uh, growing and we expect our first harvest uh, by Q1 and selling shortly thereafter. Uh, Maryland as well is also opened and uh, we're, we're selling there. Uh, in terms of new markets, uh, Missouri, uh, we've just opened up our processing center. So we expect to start shipping uh, by the end of this year. We also have some dispensaries coming online, uh, Upper Marlboro in Maryland, uh, Quincy uh, in Massachusetts. Yeah. Uh, expansion there is uh, really driving and we're seeing the growth from uh, going adult use and uh, Tiffin in terms of our new dispensary in Ohio. Yeah. Got to love those Ohio numbers. Very impressive as to how the state's performed in the first 60 to 90 days. But I think it's uh, exceeded all expectations. And uh, look, this is probably a $2 billion market, you know, eventually in due time. But uh, obviously the players that are in play there, it's a viable one and why there's been a lot of focus. I want to switch now to you, Ryan. The last time we talked, you just reported earnings and everyone was talking about the growth in the wholesale business. Mario mentioned that as well, which again showed yet another strong performance especially in your three main markets, which is, like you said, Massachusetts, Maryland, and Illinois. What do you think continues to be, I guess, the overall consistency of, uh, you know, the quality that's being done, the feedback that you're receiving, and what's, uh, what's the result of this? Yeah, I appreciate the question, Chad. I, I think, um, you know, we're really, really good at wholesale as a company, and I think we're yeah. really good at brand building. Um, and, you know, we're proud of, being able to pr produce consistent products in our markets across state lines. Um, so, you know, we've been built from the ground up with thinking about how to create a consistent product, a reliable product across state lines with different manufacturing teams 
uh, whether they're licensed or whether they're uh, operated by us. So, you know, that's that's kind of the base of, of what we build, having a consistent, uh, reliable product set. And then it's really about innovating our brands, um, you know, having having consistent innovation in our brands that's built yep. on data driven insights. You know, we're consistently looking at what are the trends within cannabis? What are some of the best brands doing in cannabis? What are they going to do next? And then comparing that with what's happening outside of cannabis. So that, yeah. that gives us a great brand portfolio sure. on top of a really good operation stack that's reliable. And then I think finally it's layered with a really, really high quality sales team in each market yeah. uh, that has a sales process. You know, we really have a refined sales process uh, that we continue to drive home quarter after quarter. And, and we're looking to drive growth in points of distribution in every market yeah. and hold price and or grow price in any place that we can. Yeah. Well, look, you know, at the end of the day, we always talk about branding opportunities, what the limitations are. But at the end of the day, we all know the future of cannabis is outside of just flour. We talk about edibles being the number one and really like putting a dent into the overall CPT industry. And I know a lot of companies like to talk highly about their product, but there's no better way of selling yourself than through actual data. And the data shows that Betty's is number one in Maryland. It's also number one in Massachusetts, and it's also performing well in Illinois, currently sitting at number seven, if I'm correct. For those that maybe don't really understand, I guess, the Illinois market ranking, how strong is that? And again, what's contributing to this, uh, the success there? Yeah, I mean, I think it's we have a great brand in Betty's. You know, I think um, limiting our discussion to just Betty's. I mean, Betty's is certainly a very successful brand in its category. Uh, yeah. we have other other very successful brands within the portfolio that you know I'm really excited about. The team's really excited about. But you know, I think with, when you talk about Betty's, it's really being laser focused on what our consumer needs are. And I think we've got some differentiated product offerings that you're not seeing. You know, everybody's got a sleep product, but, you know, I think there's some other offerings within the line that actually deliver on what they say they're going to. Um, yeah. Consumers really, um, you know, are, are finding a, a spot for in their in their purchasing patterns. So, yeah. you know, um, there's over 110 edible brands in the state of Illinois. Uh, and in less than nine months, we, we've got to number seven and we've got our sites on number one there. So very exciting. And, you know, just a footnote, we're also number one in Delaware. So it's a small market, but it is going wreck next year. So, you know, we've uh, we've got number one in, in three states and, and hopefully four with Illinois and, and some additional growth markets next year that we're very bullish about. 110 edibles within the state and now at number seven. Correct. Wow. That's an eye opener. Well, how many years were you outside of the Illinois market? Because you were there, obviously, with the association with Green Thumb. Then we're out. And how many years was it? And like, you know, when you look, go ahead with that uh, first question. Sorry. What's well, how, many, how many years were you out? Uh, was the product not available within the state of Illinois? Do you yeah, it was, um, it was about four years, about four years. It was out of market, three and a half to four years. So when you look at a lot of people within that state, and I know as conversations have had with John in the past, there was a lot of anticipation. So when you look at 110 to 7, is that exceeding expectations? It looks great. But, you know, clearly this was a market that badly wanted this product to return again. But, you know, when you think about 7 out of 110 and you've really only been back in the market now for, what, a year, year and a half, it's impressive to say the least. Appreciate that, Shad. I mean, we do have high expectations for ourselves. So, I mean, I think, um, you know, we're happy to be seven so quickly, but, you know, we're not we're not done. I mean, we really do believe that we have the best product in that category in any of the markets that we operate. So I, uh, I don't think the team and not never mind myself or Mario, I, I don't think the team would be happy unless unless they're number one. Yeah, makes sense. Well, that's the way to go. That's the goal, right? And uh, when I look at things, you know, from a calculation standpoint, valuation standpoint, Mario, in the past, we've had CEO John Levine on, he's talked about Betty's valuation being four to five times more than the current market cap. It goes to show the disconnect of this industry and the capital market side. But can you walk us through as to how you got to that valuation? Yeah, it's, it's just crazy when, when you kind of look at that gap. I think, obviously, uh, Betty's Eddie's is resonating in the market, and that's reflected by the, the rankings, but also in our cash flows. Yeah. When, when we look at our sales on the retail side and the wholesale side, even using some very conservative uh, multiples, that's a huge IP we own, and uh, we continue to leverage. We're expanding in the markets we're in and we are exploring new markets. And that's just Betty Eddie's, Betty's Eddie's, where we have some other amazing brands that are also resonating across markets and with our consumers. Uh, so we, we have a strong balance sheet and we wanna, we're in a good position to leverage that going forward. What are some viable markets that you like that grabs your interest, Ryan? Um, 
all 50? No, I, I you know, look, <laughs> I think, uh, you know, we're, we're very um, interested in expanding our line of brands. And, um, you know, I think, um, you know, we have a lot of different states in our sites that we feel as though, you know, we can really have an impact and an impact quickly. So, you know, I think there's a lot of irons in the fire right now that I don't necessarily want to disclose, but I, I would say I think 2025 is going to be a really exciting year of expansion to new markets for our brands. And I think we can see a lot of growth on the wholesale side of the business. Pennsylvania, baby. What about states like that? I see big grins, but you know, I won't lead you on that way. But I think people don't realize that you're actually you and Tim were actually the creators of Betty's Eddie's. Uh, how did that whole idea come to fruition? Because that's an incredible story. Appreciate it, Chad. I, yeah, I mean, it was uh, Tim Shaw, myself, and a gentleman named Sean Crowley. So um, all the founders of the brand. I mean, I think um, a lot of hard work, sweat and tears, uh, yeah. you know, working on different recipes for, for taffy and caramel and things. And, you know, I, I think I come out of software, so it was all about creating a differentiated product versus yeah. what we saw out there. And we saw a lot of crummy products early. Um, you know, so I, you know, honestly, it was just uh, being early, being focused, and uh, and really never giving up. You know, everything's a yeah. bump, and uh, and you know, we've been driving it ever since. And that same uh, acumen, that same determination, uh, we've applied to every one of our other brands, and and yeah. we, we feel like to Mario's point. I mean, Nature's Heritage, Vibations, Bubby's Baked, you know, in house. All of these brands have a lot of. Uh, charisma and they have a lot of they have legs um and we we do believe that uh the brands are going to be the value in the company going forward yeah question for both you and ryan i'll begin with you you talked earlier about consumer trends what are you seeing that's trending or the biggest one of the biggest trends that uh, i guess you guys have forecasted because you outlined some really important things earlier but what do we see heading into 2025 yeah, I mean, I think there's existing opportunity within our current brands for both innovation within the brand set, uh, within yeah. the existing product set, as well as line extensions. So we do believe that, you know, the horsepower that our brands currently have, uh, you know, it's it's a better use of the dollar to uh, line extend some of those brands and, and get more mar out of the marketing dollars we put behind them. Uh, and the trust that the consumers have in them. So so I think you'll see some organic growth within our current lines, as well as some line extensions out of our brands. And then I think there's two other major pieces. I think beverage is a category that may not be big in 2025, but we will see beverage become larger and larger across the industry. And I think, you know, we've got a lot of experience. Our Vibations product is basically liquid IV for cannabis, yeah. you know, powdered drink mix, and uh, and we're getting a lot of experience with that product. Um, so we're going to line extend that brand and, and likely do some ready to drink and some smaller format options out of that brand and, and get into the beverage category. And then, um, you know, finally, you know, with the consumer being distressed in 2024 and, you know, hopefully that doesn't that doesn't last too long. Uh, but, you know, the idea of a value based consumer and, and having a brand like in-house that, that's able to offer gummies and and flour mm -hmm. and vaporizers using high quality, but but still presenting a value proposition to the consumer. You know, we're seeing a lot of growth and, and um, dexterity with that brand. What would you say are the one to two most important things that you think will drive revenue growth and market exp uh, margin expansion heading into 2025 for you? I think is leveraging the new assets that we that came online uh, this year uh, and just making sure that we're operating the most uh, efficient way we can and just taking advantage of, uh, you know, um, driving uh, our distribution channels for our, our products, looking for for new uh, new channels, looking at continue to innovate our products. And finally, uh, just uh, better ways to, to market to, to our customers. Yeah. Ryan, last thing I'll leave with you too. We talked about, again, the success for wholesale. Where do you think you guys rank amongst the industry as a whole, knowing the strong numbers and consistently? Because, you know, like you said, you walked us through some of the consistency, the overall quality of product. You want to build a brand? Here's the first and most important thing. Make the product good and then build everything from there. But where do you think you rank among the industry when it comes to wholesale? Yeah, I mean, I'd put our team uh, up against anybody's team. I mean, there are certainly some teams I think are, are top notch out there and I'm, I won't name names, but I, I do think uh, wholesale is a strength of ours and, yeah. and team building is a strength of ours and, and, and lining up new states quickly and getting to revenue and, uh, and getting to points of distribution is a strength. So, you know, we know what we're looking for in, in the perfect salesperson, the perfect brand ambassador, you know, really good at identifying good operations leads for our facilities to create consistent product. 
So I, I think we've got a really good template and, and, and blueprint for what success looks like and how to, yeah. how to hire against that quickly. It is really all about the people, right? So we've got to hire great people uh, that fit into the culture and, and then drive the same mentality regardless of what state they're in. Yeah, I hear you. Well, as you guys said earlier, the common theme around the industry is uh, the increase in foot traffic regardless of what state you're in. We obviously would have liked to have different news this week on the political front, but you know, I've spoken to a lot of people in Washington and regardless of what uh, presidency we're looking at, uh, both had open conversations and attention towards cannabis. So I think we got to stay hopeful and with rescheduling in place, that's going to open up a lot of doors in 280E potentially. So there's stories like yourselves that we hear across the industry that continues to grow. And most importantly, it's a good thing. Do you feel as confident as your wholesale business as you do at the head coaching of the New England Patriots? Is that a challenge, my friend? <laughs> it's a week-to-week -week conversation, Chad. I, uh, it's a week-to-week -week conversation. My I friend, loved, buddy. I loved him as a player. It's It's been tough. Some of the decisions have been a little tough, but I'm hoping uh, he's just going through a learning curve. Well, I hope so for you guys, but I'm a Cowboys fan. It doesn't get any much worse. We've been living in this misery for 30 plus years, but uh, <laughs> look, you guys want enough. You've got enough championships. You should be grateful, right? But we are. Yeah, we are. Considering there'd be a bright side on the sports side, but <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But listen, guys, uh, a lot going on this week within the industry, but it's now earnings season, and it's good to see some of the reports that are coming out that continue to stay strong. But, you know, great job, especially on the wholesale side of the business. Tell John I say hi, and good to obviously catch up with you guys as usual. And uh, let's keep in touch, okay? Appreciate you, Shad. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Mario. Talk soon. Yeah. Cheers. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching our latest podcast. What'd you all think? Is there any information that we're missing? Is there anything you want us to cover? As these industries heat up, we're getting access to more and more big hosts. So let us know the questions that you want us to ask for you. As usual, smash that like button. We want this to go viral. Click on that bell for all notifications for the latest interviews that we're doing. And as usual, let's build this community. Subscribe to our channel because we appreciate it. Because we wouldn't be here without you. Thanks for watching, everyone.